What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Kakis and today with the launch of Festival of the Lost 2022 into Destiny 2, most players are completely distracted by the macabre sniper. I mean fair enough, it's a brand new weapon that looks and sounds fantastic, Bungie outright gives you the PvP god roll for the main quest and the PvE god rolls aren't too shabby either. However, I think this has distracted everyone from the fact that there's also three other legendary weapons available during this event that were added back from previous years of Festival of the Lost with brand new perk pools. So they have all new god rolls available to grind and specifically, today we're going to be looking at the Jurassic Green Pulse Rifles PvE god roll that is so good for most players this is going to be one of, if not the best, solar PvE primary in the game. And so, let's get started. But just before we do, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. If you're thinking, Rick, do you really play this game, bro? I play every single day, just ask my wife. Oh my god. This yeah. game is so hype, M-Tash stop in the middle of his stream to watch me open shards and get new champions. Mordecai! Taragi! Holy f dude! Now today, we're talking about the Doom Tower. It's basically a giant prison where the Arbiter, one of the best champs in the game and available free to play actually, locked away a bunch of bad guys thousands of years ago, but her power is failing and it's up to you to conquer all 120 floors to the top to prevent them from getting out. Along your way, you have all these unique bosses, each one with unique mechanics, like this giant frost spider who will revive itself if you don't kill it while it's on fire and each one has unique farmable armor set attached to them. It's the perfect endgame content once you start to get some good champs and a good team put together. But there's so much going on in Raid right now. Redeem code DK rises for a bunch of free goodies. There's a Halloween giveaway. If you click the link in the description and download the game, then you can head to trickortreat.polarium.com, enter your player ID, and from October 15th to November 5th, you can spin to win epic and legendary champions. Oh, and thousand dollar Amazon gift cards. But on top of all of that, clicking that link will get new players a starter pack worth $30 including the crack champion Virgis. You'll find all of this waiting in your inbox for the next 30 days. So guys, what are you waiting for? Click that link, download Raid Shadow Legends. All right, now when we're talking about the best of the best solar PVE primaries, you're really going after one main perk and that is incandescent. Added in Season of the Haunted, most of us know how absolutely cracked this perk is. When you get a final blow, it spreads scorch, causing damage over time, and if enemies build up enough Scorch stacks, they explode, doing even more damage. It synergizes with so many aspects of your Solar 3.0 builds. It is just mwah, chef's kiss mint. And the Jurassic Green can get it. So anytime, anytime a primary weapon can get incandescent, you have to pay attention, because again, it is one of the best PvE perks in the entire game. But let's take a look at the competition. What are the currently like best available incandescent solar weapons? Well, first off, we have the pretty new Zaiuli's Bane hand cannon. Now this drops from the King's Fall raid and guys, I ain't gonna front, this is one of the best weapons in the game. I think this is the best PVE hand cannon arguably in the entire game. It can get explosive payload and incandescent and I mean you can get the crafted version that can get enhanced incandescent which causes even more scorch stacks it's insane if you have the Zayuli's Bane right and you have the crafted version with the enhanced perks just stop watching the video now <laughs> you, you already won the game right like that is amazing but we're gonna X this out we're not gonna count the Zayuli's Bane why because it's a raid weapon the majority of Destiny 2 players have never even beaten the King's Fall raid and even if they do, they're going to have to beat it enough times to get the god roll of the Zayuli's Bane that comes with Incandescent or get five red border versions to drop to unlock crafting. So for a lot of players, that's just not feasible. However, the other weapon in contention for the best solar primary is much more accessible. It's the Callus 
mini tool submachine gun. This was a seasonal weapon uh, for Season of the Haunted. A lot of players have access to this and it is a 900 RPM SMG that can get Firstly, Threat Detector to increase the reload, and then, of course, because it's craftable, Enhanced Incandescent. I mean, you can see mine's over level 100. I absolutely love this thing. It is one of the best primaries in the entire game for PvE. Like, it's absolutely fantastic. Even still, I think you did have to pay the $10 to unlock Season of Haunted to get access to this thing, so if you're a free-to-play player, uh, yeah, the Jurassic Green is your only option, but when we specifically compare the Callus Mini Tool to the Jurassic Green, it's actually closer than you might think. In terms of weapon archetypes, the Jurassic Green is a rapid fire frame pulse rifle, and overall, in the PvE meta, this is definitely worse than a 900 RPM SMG. However, the Jurassic Green is going to have a significant range advantage over the Callus Mini Tool, and especially when you're doing higher level content, nightfalls, and so on, sometimes you want weapons that can engage enemies from further distances, right? Like, you don't want to be picking away at a thrall from across the map with your SMG. G. In addition to that, let's not forget that just being a different weapon, a pulse rifle, can really matter in terms of being able to deal with champions. Right now, pulse rifles can deal with unstoppable champions, hand cannons can deal with literally nothing. So that matters quite a bit as well. In addition to that, when we look at the PvE god roll of the Jurassic Green, what you're going for is, you know, whatever barrel you want, then you really want an extended or appended mag to increase the magazine size because the first main perk, you can get subsistence. Defeating targets partially reloads the magazine from reserves. This is a phenomenal PvE perk in my opinion. And guys, I actually like subsistence better than Threat Detector. Threat Detector is the best of what the Callus Mini Tool has available, but there's a lot of better reload improving perks out there. I mean, how many times have you guys been using the Callus Mini Tool, you kill all the enemies around you, you go in for a reload, and it takes absolutely forever, or you're just out of range of the perk to be active. Like, it's not the most efficient perk out there. And not to mention, subsistence is an absolute wombo combo with incandescent. Now, take a look at this footage here. I lower my magazine size first, down to 18 rounds. Then I go in and get a kill on this single drag. My magazine goes back up to 21 because of subsistence, and then I sit there. I wait for the scorch damage from incandescent to kill the other enemies, and as you can see, my magazine goes up to 33 and then 45. I killed one single drag, and because the scorch damage from incandescent counts as weapon kills, it triggers subsistence multiple times. So the ammo efficiency is absolutely insane. I spent, what, like three to six rounds killing that drag, and I went from 18 back up to 45 rounds. And so as a result, the Jurassic Green with magazine extending perks because you want that magazine as high as possible because subsistence gives you a percent of your magazine back then subsistence and incandescent is unbelievably efficient for just chaining kills over and over and over again i will go through entire encounters and you can see in the background gameplay without reloading a single time so what you have with this god roll is a completely free-to-play gun that's pretty easy to acquire, able to get one of the best PvE perks in the entire game with Incandescent, combine it with another perk that actually synergizes really well with it, and it makes it capable of doing things that even some of the best weapons in the game can't do. Like, the kill chains you can get with this thing are just nutty. Now, is this outright better than the Callus Mini Tool? It's hard to say. In certain scenarios, it is. In other scenarios, you know, it does fall behind the mini tool. But honestly, if you can, get both. If you already have a Callus mini tool, heck, if you already have a Zayuli's Bane and a mini tool like me, I think this thing is still worth going after. Getting a top tier incandescent god roll on a pulse rifle to give you that diversity depending on what anti-champion mods are available and what content you want to be doing is a very, very powerful thing. So 100% 
just leave the Macabre sniper rifle alone for a bit. Don't, don't forget about the Jurassic Green's new god roll. Guys, that is it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.